Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's Final Fantasy 7 Intermission video we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the 4 Condor minigame. Yes that's right 4 Condor is back albeit in a bit more detail than obviously 97 and the way it works is you interact with random NPCs on the streets of Sector 7 and it's similar to the way the card game in Final Fantasy 8 worked so I think it's a great inclusion into the remake as a whole because we can now play this in the further parts to come across the whole world of Gaia that's going to be a great addition. I love the card game in Final Fantasy VIII. I love the Blitzball in Final Fantasy X. So this is just another thing that you could get lost in as the story expands. But today's video is an ultimate guide on everything you need to know from the basics. So the weaknesses, how to understand them, the boards that you use, how to get stronger troops, and with that being said, the stronger boards. And eventually how you can beat everybody available in this DLC, including the Grandmaster. But I will say from the outset, this is going to include spoilers. It's going to include, obviously, all the characters that you come across to play the game against. And obviously it's going to include the name of the Grandmaster. So if you don't want anything like that spoiled for you, I suggest you save the video. Come back to it at a later date if you're stuck. But if you do enjoy this guide and it is something that you obviously found really useful, please let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe for more Final Fantasy VII Intermission content. And with that being said, let's mosey. Right, so firstly I want to talk about weaknesses. Now it's pretty straightforward. If you look here, the enemy spawns blue, I spawn green. Now if you take a look in the very center of the screen underneath the time, you'll see the little blue, red and green symbols. Now that's all you kind of need to understand for this particular DLC. So if somebody spawns a blue enemy, like in this particular battle, green is its weakness, so obviously I spawned the green troop. Now obviously if the enemy spawns a green, you spawn red and vice versa. So just follow that as a rule of thumb. Obviously there are a few things to consider. The aerial troops for instance. Some ground troops cannot attack aerial troops and obviously I don't know a full list of that at the moment but it'll be self-explanatory really. So if you've got a guy with like a sword for instance, I don't think they're going to be able to attack an aerial threat. And obviously you know the more you play it the more you'll understand what troops you can and can't attack with the troops that you've got. That's just one of those learning curve things but the basics are blue strong against against red, red strong against green and green strong against blue. And the first three fights, which are rank one, that you can find in sector seven, you'll see the number ones located on the mini map. If you follow this rule of thumb, I very highly doubt that you'll run into any problems. Now next I want to talk about the actual understanding of the board before you obviously get into battle. So basically you can set this up depending on the enemy strategy which you can see on the right hand side. So for this instance I was actually playing against Jesse. Now firstly you can see that I'm using a board called the Sorcerer Board 2 and Jesse is using the Battalion Board 2. Now if we take a look at the breakdown from the top left corner, ATP speed is self-explanatory it's how fast that your little blue bars charge up and obviously the troops below will have little numbers next to them three four five four and two for my board so that's how many atb slots are needed to obviously spawn those troops but those troops are random it comes up on the right hand side as you'll notice in game a bit like tetris where you can see the next few troops that are going to be available to you now for instance i can see that jesse has only obviously got one red troop the rest are green and blue so for me a guard dog's pretty weak anyway like really weak it's probably the weakest troop in the whole game if they've only got one red the likeliness is that my troops will just hit it once regardless so in an ideal world you don't really need any blue troops because if you were to use blue troops obviously Jesse's green troops would be strong against them and the only reason you need the blue troops would be to obviously kill a guard dog. Now I'm not saying don't use blue troops but I'm just saying in an ideal world you just go into the game fully green and blue. And the way you change these, if you look at the very bottom of my board it actually says press triangle to edit loadout. Now. 
when you click it you'll obviously bring up a list of troops that you've collected so far in the campaign and at the very start you should have enough to get you through these early fights so don't worry about them at this point so just make sure you're obviously counteracting obviously the weaknesses from your opponents and you should be good also if you press square you can see the set materia details for your board to use them in game you press l1 and execute accordingly now after you've defeated jesse she's rank two so obviously the next step is rank three and this is where things start to pick up a little so the rank three fight is actually wedge and although I beat him first time without changing anything that we've already learned, now if you defeat him, great, but if you get to this point and you can't actually beat him, you're struggling to take him out. Old Snapper is a collector of four Condor coins, and you can actually buy better boards, better troops, with better rarities from him. Now, the way you obviously get the four Condor coins is by playing the game, and you can go back to the rank one and rank two, battle them again, and get yourself some coins to obviously build enough up to buy all these so if you're struggling with wedge this is what i highly recommend is coming here and spending the coins that you've already picked up get yourself the helicopter get yourself any of the elite troops they seem to be the most versatile they don't seem to take as long to charge up as some of the bigger stuff but they're not as weak as obviously the stuff that charge up really really quickly so head over to old snapper and pick up some new arsenal and i'm sure you'll fly through wedge and after you've beat Wedge, you've actually unlocked the Grand Master, who is rank 4. And that is the one and only Chadley. Yeah, the very clever kid in the Final Fantasy VII Remake series. Now, at this point in the story, especially if you haven't progressed from the first time you arrived at Sector 7, I very highly doubt that you'll be able to beat him for a few reasons. The board that he uses has got a faster ATB charge up than any of the boards that you've got he's got better magic he's got better spells on his board and honestly there is no reason to try and take him on at this point my best suggestion is just to progress with the story to the point where you've left sector 7 you've come back and shinra have found your hideout so at that point you'll have picked up a new board and some new troops on your excursion away so at that point you are more prepared to take on chadley so let's jump into the battle and take a look at the new stuff now as you can see we've got a new board called the assassin board 3 and it has a speed of 3 which matches chadley's grand master board now we can have more slots but his headquarters and outposts are a lot stronger than ours so that means our troops will die quicker when we get into that final third one thing i will say about this board is it doesn't have any spells no materia that's its downfall chadley can still use it so we picked up the board on that first mission when we left sector seven and we also picked up a green sweeper which are the two main catalysts for me getting through this fight along with the helicopters but now that you're on an even playing field when it comes down to the speed it just makes things that little bit easier but with that being said it did actually still take me a few goes to get through this but honestly a big game changer here was i was able to spawn two helicopters near enough straight off the bat in this fight i was quite lucky that he spawned the red base the fact the helicopters got to take that and obviously the troops coming out of it down pretty quick was one of the main reasons to my success. If it doesn't look like you're getting anywhere straight off the bat with this, press pause and just click retry. Don't be digging yourself a hole that you kind of that is already too deep, so to speak. Because with his materia, if it doesn't look like you're destroying him straight off the bat, the likeliness is he's just going to be able to come forward and crush all your troops. But yeah, there's not really much else to add to this guide. I've obviously give you all the details when it comes to the elemental differences, where to get the stronger troops and boards. And if you have watched this video all the way through, I'll be very surprised if you don't get this done pretty quick. As I say, if this guide has helped you out, do hit that like button as it will help me out dramatically. And I'll also know that you enjoy these type of videos. If you do like Final Fantasy VII Remake and Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission content, it is the main focus on this channel. Please do hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. And until next time, take care.